Now we're going to talk about mistakes that you must avoid in your bank statement when making a visa application. Now it's very important because your ability to pay for your you know, intended trip is fundamental in deciding if you would get a visa or if you would be rejected. Now, the first thing you want to avoid is attaching a fake document. Now, attaching a fake bank statement. I don't need to go into details why this is a bad idea. You must understand that embassies do verify details on your bank statement yes it may be random but how are you sure that yours will not be amongst um, the information that they will need to verify now once you have presented your bank statement you know you have more or less consented for them to verify the content in that bank statement and so what happens is that embassies do have contact in some or all of the banks where they can actually forward details of your the, the bank statement that you have presented for that purpose for verification now imagine that you presented a fake bank statement and it goes to the bank or whoever you know the banking officer is and then they they revert to the embassy that the information is incorrect of course your visa application would be denied so if you're wondering if embassies do check you know on can and verify the content of your bank statement yes it may be random but yes most embassies do verify now the second thing you want to avoid is that you want to avoid um you know not operating your bank statements like a regular person would operate it and then this, let's say you making a lump sum deposit into your bank account that probably has been inactive for a long period of time if you do have a savings account details would speak for itself but if you're presenting a bank statement and saying okay this is my bank statement that i use on a regular basis what do you think that bank statement would look like it would see you make deposits, it would see you make withdrawals, it would see you make everyday payments, you know, on that bank account. So I find that most times when people want to present a bank statement, they just go and um, maybe their account has been inactive, you know, for a long time. And then they just find people to pay lump sum, you know, money. You have an account that hasn't seen, you know, more than a hundred thousand deposits in, let's say like six months. And then all of a sudden, someone just pays in two million naira into your account. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, and then let's say you have no explanation now i'm not saying that that cannot happen on regular but if you do not include an explanation as to the source of that fund then it makes it suspicious it just makes it look like oh because you know you were going for a visa interview you decided to make that deposit just to prove that you have that money and it would appear as if the money is not available to you so the reason why you want to avoid you know lying is because if you were assessing someone, if you, if you wanted to find out if someone was telling the truth, what would you do? You would look at the details. Do not think that the visa officer is not going to be looking at the same details that you would be looking at if you were trying to verify if someone was telling the truth or not. So now it is when people lie that they go through extreme measures to come up with the difference to be able to, you know, support their lie. But if you're telling the truth, you know, you would realize that you would do what a natural person would do. Of course, if you say you're going on vacation, it is believed that you should be able to afford your vacation. And then what that happens is that even if you don't have a total amount of money to pay for your trip, you would, you know, have evidence that you're you have a job you know and if you since you've planned your trip three months in advance even though the money is not complete by the time you're expecting xyz maybe you're expecting a bonus from work or maybe you by the time you get one more um salary you know payment you would be able to afford your trip so make it believable do not tell people to pay in huge sum of money into inactive accounts it would they would look at the details you know visa officers don't just go look at the balance if they're in doubt that you can afford to pay for your trip they will be looking at the details so when they find that you some of money was paid into your bank account and you do not provide an explanation as to where the money came from and what the money is for it would not um, help your case now you would ask me how do you provide an explanation as to the source of fund attach a cover letter always accompany your visa application with a cover letter it is in your cover letter that you can make that explanation also if you're attaching your business account you need to be clear 
you know <laughs> what, what you're doing now if you're touching your business account as proof that you that your business is um, going concern you know it's making money now you should also understand that business money does not belong to you so when you're saying that um, when you attach your business account always include a cover letter you know explaining you know why you're attaching your business account and also the fact that maybe the business is going to be paying for that trip you know that's okay particularly if you have other partners or proprietors you know you need to also include a letter which states that that business would be paying you know for your trip if you want to find out the minimum amount you should have in your bank account to apply for a visa i believe i covered that extensively in this video so you want to go watch it you know it has all the answers you know that you need so i have a few comments where people would ask you know that what if i pay in money and then before my visa is granted i have made withdrawal you know like um if you're like i said do what a natural person you would do if you're no one just expects that money will just be entering your bank account and then that you don't have a life now if you for example you you have a bank balance that was let's say you know two million naira and then you had your spending from it you are allowed to go and spend 300k you're allowed to go and spend 100k you know 200k 500k even sometimes one million if you want to you know before your visa is granted of course it, the most important thing is you know you must have if you have a sustainable source of income it would not matter because when they're verifying let's say they are verifying your bank statement they'll be verifying your, they'll be verifying that bank statement as at the date you know you presented the bank statement no one is going to be saying okay as at today how much does the person have it's only when there are other reasons for them to imagine that the money might not be available to you. And at the same time, you don't want to, let's say you had two million naira, you printed the bank account, you know, to use for the visa, and then you go and then you withdraw 1.9 million naira and leave 100,000 naira. Like, seriously, why would you want to do that? At least allow the money to sit in there until your visa is granted. So it doesn't mean you cannot spend from it, but don't spend, you know, in a way that makes it look as if that money does not belong to you. Now, with money, imagine that someone gave you money Money to pay in there they gave you two million naira and then they want their money back of course you'll be withdrawing 1.8 or 1.6 so that is suspicious that's why when i say operate the account like a natural person would do that's exactly what i am talking about imagine that you said okay your trip costs two million naira and then you've gone away you've gone and then you've withdrawn like 1.9 million naira. okay where are you going to get money to um, pay for your trip particularly if you do not have a sustainable source of income that can be traced you know to you so do what a natural person would do and you would not feel you would not feel the pressure with you so i hope that this video was useful share it with someone else you know if you learn something share it with someone